Greetings and welcome to the Sunday School Lesson Review for today. I'm your teacher, Reverend Mary Tillman, and we are in Unit 1 still. Today is lesson number two, and from the quarterly, the title is Prophet of Conquest. From the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults lesson, the title is Making Wise Choices. Devotional reading, Hebrews 11, 23 through 31. The background scripture, Joshua 5, verses 13 through chapter 6, verse 27. And our printed passage for today's lesson is in Joshua, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 15, sixth chapter, verses 1 through 5, verses 15 and 16, and verse 20. And the key verse is from Joshua, the sixth chapter, verse number 2. From the NIV Bible, it reads, The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. Joshua is the first of the twelve historical books in the Bible. In today's text, the leader of the Israelites received a message from his commander-in-chief, the Lord, regarding the conquest of the promised land. Through Joshua, God delivered the Israelites into the promised land, just as he would later deliver future believers to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. There are three questions for consideration in today's lesson. One is, what was significant about Joshua's encounter with the true commander-in-chief, the Lord himself? The second question, what weapons did God use for the destruction of Jericho? And question number three, what does this lesson say about obedience and following God's command? In our lesson context, Moses reaches the end of his life. God allowed Moses to see the promised land from the peaks of Mount Nebo. After 40 years in the wilderness, the children of Israel were finally ready to enter the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God had promised the land to them, but they had to fight for it. God selected Joshua, a man who had been a faithful assistant to Moses as the nation's next leader. He was one of the original 12 spies chosen by Moses, and we see this in Numbers 13 and 16. After Moses' death, Joshua became their leader and army commander. God told him the city of Jericho would be delivered into the hands of the Israelites. Joshua prepared God's people to cross the Jordan River and to enter the long-awaited promised land. The first challenge was a battle at the city of Jericho. The priests were descendants of Levi, the third son of Jacob, and they were referred to as the Levites, responsible for all the principal duties at the tabernacle to include the care of the Ark of the Covenant. And inside the Ark of the Covenant were the Ten Commandments. This week's lesson's aims are, after experiencing this lesson, you should be able to, one, explain how Joshua acted obediently to the vision from the Lord, two, Reflect on our inefficiencies when challenges overwhelm us. And three, commit to obeying God, especially in trying times. There are three outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book, and I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound on each one. Outline number one, encountering the commander-in-chief, and we find that in Joshua 5, verses 13 through 15. In outline number two, the commander-in-chief's battle strategy, and that is in Joshua 6, verses 1 through 5. And our third outline is victory through obedience, and that's found in Joshua 6, 15 and 16, and verse 20. Outline number one, encountering the commander-in-chief, Joshua 5, 13 through 15. Key point number one. Joshua had been assured that God was with him and would give him success if he faithfully obeyed his word. That's in Joshua 1, 
verses 1 through 19. God's mind was made up. He had already destined this land for his chosen people. As Joshua grew close to Jericho, the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a man with his sword drawn. Joshua was not afraid to confront the man. Joshua went up to the man and asked, Whose side are you on? Ours are the enemies. That's in verse 13. The man didn't give a direct answer, but stated he came as the captain of the army of the Lord. Joshua was in the presence of the true commander-in-chief, the Lord himself. Verse 14 says that Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? Recognizing he was in the presence of the Lord, Joshua immediately prostrated himself at the man's feet and asked for direction. Those committed to doing God's work are convinced that he will show up or make his presence known to encourage and strengthen just when it's needed most. The drawn sword, as noted in verse 13, signified that God would fight for Joshua and his people. The angel told Joshua to take off his shoes because he was standing on holy ground and Joshua obeyed. That's in verse 15. This was a summons to worship. And if you'll remember another occasion where the prophet was directed to take his sandals off was Moses at the burning bush event. Verse 15 reinforces that Joshua was truly in the presence of the Lord. Key point number two. Joshua, discerning that he was in God's presence, prostrated himself in a position of worship. Joshua bowed in awe as he recognized he was in the presence of someone greater and mightier than himself. When we give ourselves to God's work, we must present ourselves reverently and humbly to God, removing any sin or unclean thing that might contaminate our worship. Our worship has to be genuine. Our worship has to be for real. As we move to outline number two, the commander-in-chief's strategy, that's found in Joshua, the sixth chapter, verses one through five. Key point number one, we note in verse one, the city of Jericho was securely shut up. None went out and none came in. In verse number two, the Lord says to Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king and the mighty men of valor. God had already given them the city. He just told Joshua that. But Joshua was given specific directions for how Israel was to approach the city of Jericho. Conquering the promised land had to begin with conquering the first city. And that city was Jericho. God, who was with Moses, made a solid commitment to be with Joshua. In chapter 1, verse 5b, God said, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Verses 3 and 5 describes the battle plan. Joshua was to lead a procession of the men of war around the city of Jericho following God's plan to overtake the city of Jericho. Seven priests were to carry the Ark of the Covenant behind the seven trumpets made of ram's horns called sulfurs. God told them to march around circling the city once a day for six days following the priests and the Ark of the Covenant. And on the seventh day, Joshua obeyed God and told the people to march around Jericho seven times and then blow the trumpets, shout, and overtake the city. Suddenly, Jericho city walls crumbled and fell flat to the ground, enabling the Israelites to rush in and conquer the city. Key point number two. Without God, Israel's army would have faced definite defeat. Although Joshua was a skilled military strategist, 
God did not leave it to him to decide how to conquer the city. God accomplishes his will using whatever method pleases him. The people would learn they could not win a battle without God. Israel's victory was not in the marching, the blowing of the trumpets, or the shouting, but it was in the choosing to obey God's instructions. We look at outline number three, victory through obedience, and we find this in Joshua 6, verses 15 and 16, and verse 20. This tells of the victory on the seventh day of the march. Joshua and the people arose early before daybreak to prepare for the march. Key point number one, the people obeyed God. On the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times. On the completion of the seventh round, Joshua gave the command for the priest to blow the trumpets and the people to give a great shout. That's in verse 16. This was Israel's battle cry. God heard it and caused the walls to fall. And the people entered and destroyed the city. Key point number two. Joshua told the people that the Lord had given him the city, had given them the city. The city of Jericho was defeated. Verse 20 says, when the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. Joshua was victorious not because of military strategy, but because the hand of God was on him and he obeyed God's instructions. God's hand is on you and me, and when we follow his instructions, we too will be successful in whatever our assignment is. So in summary, the story of Joshua illustrates that men and women who lead God's people must be anchored to the power and the presence of God. Whenever God calls us to do his work, we must follow his plan, his directions, even though we don't understand his chosen methods or when it doesn't make sense. God assured Joshua that he would be with him and he assures us today through the power and the unctioning of the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Remember, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us in all things. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit after he ascended back to heaven. So the Spirit lives within us, and all we have to do is follow as he leads. God does not require that we always understand his will. What he does requires that we, what he does require is that we obey his commands even if they appear to be unclear or unreasonable from our perspective. I think I'll say that again. God does not require that we always understand his will. What he does require is that we obey his commands, even if they appear to be unclear or unreasonable from our perspective. For example, the scripture says rejoice in trials. That doesn't make sense. It also says, give God one-tenth of our earnings. Doesn't make sense. It says, love your enemies. That really doesn't make sense. And it says, Jesus said on the Sermon at the Mount, do good to those who despitefully use you. That does not make sense. But God said it, so we have to obey it. Remember, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my, this is the Lord speaking, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Our responsibility as believers is to trust and obey without question. I hope this lesson gave you food for thought. Think about your obedience. Why is it important that we obey God's word? Why is it we find it 
difficult sometimes to follow God's instructions because of the way we see things. Remember, God doesn't expect us to understand. He just expects us to follow where he leads and to follow his commands. God bless you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to present this lesson on making wise choices. We thank you for giving guidance, discernment, and strength for every task to which you have called us. Now, Father, we ask that you give us a desire to make wise choices and also to follow you where you lead without question. It is in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. God bless you, and until next time, God be with us all.